peace is a priceless power again. Peace is an experience everybody will want to have. Peace is what we can't take for granted. You can't trade your peace for nothing. I mean, what can you give in exchange? What can you actually give your peace in exchange for? Violence, conflict. But in our time today, that is what we see. There are particular people who um, feel <laughs> uh, the peace of mind is maybe getting too, too much. It's actually overflowing. So then they would want to, you know, cause a bit of some violence, cause others to um, be conflicted against themselves. Uh, so that, you know, a bit of violence and then later they would want to get back into their peaceful um, state. Why would you want to engineer something of this nature? As to whether you are going to get that peace back, which you had to sell out so cheaply, is another uh, question you are going to have to find answers to. But the basic point is. We all want to have an experience in a peace. When you have peace of mind, there are so many things you are able to effectively do. But when, on the other hand, you lose peace and lots of things go haywire, what are some of the activities or the practices you might be doing that are stealing the peace you want to have or you already have away from you? We'll look at a few of them. Now, basically, we are identifying five or such things you should stop doing that are taking the peace you already have or that are actually denying you of the peace, the inner peace you want to have. What are they? Not the first thing, yes. You always want to please people. You always want to do what makes somebody offer you appellations, praises. Oh, you, you are so excellent, you are. But the point is, you can't please everybody. You can't make everyone happy. There are certain actions of yours that may be right. Anyone, pardon me, anyone in the, in, in the right frame work of his or her mind is able to look at what you're doing and conclude that, yes, what you're doing is right. But somebody else will come and perhaps out of envy condemn that positive act of yours. Do you have to apologize to that person for having done what is right? Because he or she thinks that thing is not right, possibly on the grounds of not agreeing with you. Well, you can't please everyone. Now, when you desire to please everyone, it creates in you a state of conflict. It creates in you a state of confusion because you are always struggling within yourself to want to do what will make somebody or everyone appreciate you. It doesn't work like that. Be you. Remain focused on everything good, everything right. For as long as it is right, if you even have only one person expressing appreciation, encouraging you to keep on doing the right thing, and the remaining 99 will be against you, it is healthy. Because in the end, you are going to be vindicated. You can't please everybody. Point number two, focusing on things you can't control. The point is, you can only learn to adjust. Sicknesses are tendencies in life. You can't stop them from happening. You can control, you can actually control it. Or you can control sicknesses. There are certain basic things in your life you can control. You plan to do something and out of nowhere, there will be an occurrence, and that particular thing will end up not getting carried out. It's a situation. You have no control over it. So what do you have to do? You adjust. And possibly look for an alternative, look for another way. So when you, you are bent on doing something which seems or appears to be failing over and over and over again, yes, you wouldn't actually want to give up. But just learn to look for alternatives. Not necessarily getting fixated on just that one approach. It will make you feel very frustrated and with no peace in your mind and in your heart. So learn to adjust. Don't try to always have your way out using only one approach. Be dynamic. Be dynamic in dealing with issues. Don't be fixated in just one approach. That will steal your inner peace away from you. One other way or practice we oftentimes put up that makes you lose your inner peace as dwelling on the past. Yes, everyone has a past experience. Our past experiences are stories. We all form part of the story of our lives that help us learn certain lessons to enable us to prepare ourselves for what lies ahead. 
So the past, your past will not be counted out of your life. But you don't have to dwell on the past. So you have an, um, a, a, a failed relationship with, with, with someone. You tried, you failed, it didn't work. So then you decide you are not trying it anymore. <laughs> that should not be it. So what happened in the previous experience, in the previous relationship, what happened? That certain things were not right. Certain things were not rightly done. Choices were not properly made. So those are lessons. You pick on those lessons. You think to get into another relationship. Now this time, the lessons you learned in the previous experience, in the previous relationship, you try to apply them so that the errors that were committed, which caused the previous relationship to fail, will not be repeated. So as it, so that you're able to actually experience a very successful relationship in the next one. So don't always dwell on the past. Yes, if you want to focus your mind on the past, it should be rather identify the lessons learned and apply them to yourself to get you being able to face what lies ahead. But don't be fixated on the past, letting it restrict you from moving on and making progress. That we are still your inner peace away from you. It's not healthy. Now, one other practice is envying other people's success. <laughs> Naturally, the sense of envy cannot be wiped out. It is a natural feeling. But when it's seen or entertained from a positive perspective, where you envy somebody is you allowing that sense of envy to challenge you to work very hard. Not necessarily becoming just like that individual, but getting yourself improved, at least to give you the life you want. That form of envy is healthier than the negative form of envy. Yes, the truth is, when you celebrate the successes of other people, you thank God for having made other people successful, people you admire, people you may not even know. When you join them in celebration of your successes, that opens more avenues to you, to get you also learning to do what will make you become successful or have certain things you might have planned for yourself to get it fulfilled or accomplished. Don't be envious in an unhealthy way about successes of people. It brings to you negative energy. What will make you feel frustrated for a long time in your life? That is not healthy. Now the last practice that most often greatly steals your inner peace is giving your power away. <laughs> we oftentimes give our power away to people. We oftentimes allow people to control us. We oftentimes, you know, cheaply let go of the power we have naturally been endowed with to get us improved. You are angry. You blame people for your anger. You are sad. You blame people for your sadness. Something you planned to win that was actually for, for, for a healthy reason failed. And you blame someone for the failure of that healthy, healthy plan. It is high time such attitudes were made to change. You must, at this point in time, if you like the way that, change from that way of life. Feel responsible for certain moments. Moments of you feeling very angry, irresponsible, feel responsible for it. So the question is, what caused the anger? If you were not to have done something that got somebody saying what got you angry, the sense of anger would not have been triggered. So who took that first move? Yourself. Admit that, yes, you are angry. It is an emotion. What can I do to get myself feeling better or okay? Focus on that particular thing. Do it. And get relieved of that emotion of anger. You failed. It didn't work. Don't blame somebody for your failure. Focus on what you did wrongly. Focus on what you can do to get you back on track. You try again and let's see what the outcome will be. Don't give your power away so cheaply. You deserve to have that natural power you've been endowed with to get you becoming a successful individual. <laughs> Five common practices we engage in that steal our inner peace away from us so cheaply. Worrying about pleasing people all the time. Not healthy. Focusing on things you can't control. <laughs> don't always practice this. Rather, learn to do what we just dwelling on the past. Dwelling on the past. Your past is part of your life story. Identify the lessons learned in your past experience and apply them to yourself. That will make you become better than the past year. Envying people's success. No, not a good thing to do. Celebrate with them in their successful moments. That will give you a chance to succeed. Finally, 
giving your power away. Not good enough for you to have inner peace. I encourage you to stay focused in your life. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the community we are building together. Until I come away another time, I encourage you to take care of yourself. Remain focused and keep a positive attitude. See ya.